I got into the graduate program in Virginia at Old Dominion, mm -hmm. and I was a speech pathologist for about 10 years. What I found was that um, initially I was worried about having children with autism on my caseload. I wasn't sure what to do. Mm. But over time, those became my favorite patients because mm. they, um, there was a lot in there that could be worked with and teased out. Mm -hmm. um, their families were spectacular. What I also found, much to my chagrin, was that as a clinician, I didn't have access to a lot of the research, and, and what I was able to find was contradictory mm. at times. Um, it, confusing. There were lots of treatments that families with autism selected for their children mm -hmm. that maybe you didn't see so much of with um, families with children with Down syndrome, say. Mm -hmm. um, so when I tried to find out more, I couldn't then um, I thought, well, maybe I could study it. And beyond studying it, I also have a tremendous love of teaching. Mm -hmm. And um, my husband said, maybe if you taught at the university level, you could inspire these young future clinicians to go out and um, take their craft and do wonderful things for children and families as well. Um, I thought I really just wanted to teach, actually, and mm -hmm. do minimal research. But once I started seeing how fascinating the research is and how exciting mm -hmm. it is, this all comes out of your mm -hmm. own brain. Mm -hmm. You don't have a manual that tells you what to do. You get mm -hmm. to decide what the question is that's mm -hmm. so important to move these children. I, I like to work mm -hmm. with... Um, children. I'm most interested in the children we have now and what we can do to make their lives better now. You get to ask that question and then you get to figure out how to answer it. What do we need to do? And it's very collaborative. You've got lots of people that are more than willing to help you and they're all brilliant so they see little holes in your designs and help you plug them up and then you get to go test it and see results. You get to really see is it true or is it not true. And you just don't, you, there's no other environment you can really do that in. Even as a clinician, you can, you know, test things with your one child. But, so, anyway, I'm so thankful for this opportunity. It's um, communication. I'm in speech and hearing sciences, children with autism, sort of the intersection of those two. And I'm very interested in attention. And, of course, being a clinician for so many years, what I found was that I could have these phenomenal therapy plans for these kids. And I'd get in there and try to start working. And if I didn't have their attention, it really didn't matter yeah. what I had planned on doing. Mm -hmm. So there is um, a small <clears throat> bit of literature about attention um, as far as interventions. We know a fair amount about attention in children with autism and what it looks like, but there's not a lot on how to improve attention mm -hmm. in children with autism. So that's mm -hmm. what I'm very interested in. Mm -hmm.